Hey, I'm Randy and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we help everyone find high value hi-fi home theater and headphone equipment. And today, we're talking about a brand new turntable from Monolith. That's right, the Monolith turntable. Is it the new budget turntable that beats everything else? I don't know. Grab a cup of coffee, sit down, and let's talk about the new Monolith turntable. A turntable from Monolith. Who is Monolith? Well, they are Monoprice's premium audio brand. They have speakers, they have headphones, they have amplifiers. <laughs> now they have a turntable. My experience has always been pretty positive with the Monolith stuff. So I have a bunch of headphones, M570, 565, M1060, 1070, and 1070C. The sound quality has always been good. The finish, maybe the build quality, hasn't always been great. Does this buck the trend? Kind of. The build quality on this from two, three feet away looks fantastic. And it really is fantastic compared to a lot of other turntables in this price category. This, what is the price category? $250 for this one. And then I think there's another one for $200 with a different cartridge. So the styling on this is kind of like a combination between Fluence and U-Turn. Project and uh, who else? Riga. They have kind of the slimmer plinths, a little bit more of a modern design. This one is a bit more of a modern design compared to Fluence. There's some very similar styling cues between this one and the Fluence, especially with the knobs. And I wouldn't be surprised if this was coming out of the same factory that is making the Fluence turntables. This is a very attractive turntable. Like I said, from a few, even if you get up close on it, it's, it's pretty good. And frankly, a lot better than some more expensive turntables from more well-known turntable brands. I've got no complaints about this one. Again, though, when you touch and you feel things, they don't seem, this doesn't seem like a thousand dollar turntable. But conversely, it doesn't really seem like a $250 turntable either. I would say the build quality is right in line, maybe in line with U-Turn, a little bit, uh, it's not as good as the Fluence. Fluence is just beefier. But again, there's nothing wrong with the build quality of this table. And at $250, I think it exceeds the build quality of other tables at the same price range. So setup, it's gonna be frustrating for some people. If you've ever set up a Fluence turntable though, they are similar in a couple of respects. So to actually balance the tone arm, you just stick on the counterweight, you turn it until the tone arm, and you have to take off the stylus cover, okay? So you turn it, take it out of the holder, turn it until it's level. Then you put it back in the holder, there's a little inner dial, you turn that to zero, there's a line on the tone arm, turn that to zero, and then you turn the whole assembly one full rotation because one full rotation is two grams and that's what the tracking requirements are on this audio technica cartridge it is the at vm 95 e cartridge pretty good cartridge the anti-skate this is where it's going to make people angry maybe the anti-skate is a literal counterweight that hangs off a piece of fishing line and there is supposed to be a loop at the end of that. My loop was kind of right in the middle of the line. So I don't feel like it, I don't feel like it was as low as it should be. And then there are three or four knurled little indentions on the end of a barb here. And depending upon how much anti-skate, this is the 10th time I've done this, how much anti-skate you need depends on where you put it on the little barb, okay? And I set it where I was supposed to set it, but it didn't feel right and it didn't sound right either. So I messed with it, I moved it up one notch, and then everything seemed fine, okay? So you, the takeaway is you're gonna have to play with it. If you've lost a little dexterity and your vision is not as good as it used to be, this may be a little bit frustrating to set up. I think most people that have some experience with turntables are gonna be fine. The problem is this is priced as a entry level turntable. So for some people, this is not gonna be a seamless experience. Tone arm, tone arms carbon. 
which a lot of manufacturers make a huge deal out of. Oh, our tone arm is made out of carbon, okay? I have had a tone arm made out of carbon and I've had tone arms not made out of carbon and I've never heard a huge significant difference when they have the same cartridge. But this does have a carbon fiber tone arm, okay? Great. It also has, more importantly on the end, a removable head shell. And I think that's really important because a removable head shell makes it very easy to switch out cartridges, which makes it very easy to enjoy different sound signatures on your turntable. So something like this for someone just getting started in vinyl is really cool because then you can start experimenting with different cartridges and find out what signature you like. And it's just fun. It's kind of like having different speakers. You can have some warm speakers. You can have some analytical speakers. Same thing with cartridges. You can switch them out. But this, with the removable head shell, makes it a lot easier. Okay, the VM95E from Audio-Technica. That cartridge comes in around $50 to $70 if you would be buying it separately from this table. So that's a pretty good cartridge on a $250 table. Compared to the Ortofon 2M Blue, 2M Red, the Naga Oka MP110, the Ortofon OM5E, and the Ortofon OM10, I would say it kind of falls the south side of neutral. It's not nearly as analytical as the 2M Red or the 2M Blue. 2M Blue is a lot more neutral than the 2M Red. 2M Red's a little bit forward in the upper mid-range. This, good. It's got some kick. It's got some oomph, some body to it. And I was listening actually through, just pointed it like you can see that. I was listening to the Klipsch RP500M for most of my testing. And that speaker can be forward in the upper mid-range. With this cartridge going through the integrated internal phono preamp, this speaker sounded like a neutral speaker, if a little bit on the warm side. So this cartridge to my ear sounds a little bit beefy thick it's got some body okay it's not going to i don't think this cartridge is going to cause any type of listening fatigue but that's just my experience i could not directly a b any cartridges that i have next to this one because while this one does have a removable head shell the tone arm on my fluence is like a little bit of an s curve so the removable head shell on my fluence is straight the removable head shell on the mono price or monolith is a little bit angled. So I can't, well, I can, but it's not going to sound very good. I can't put this cartridge with this head shell onto the monolith turntable. So if you are getting this table and you are looking to get a different head shell to swap out cartridges very quickly, make sure you're getting the right head shell that fits with this turntable because it has a straight tone arm versus an S tone arm, okay? Make sure you get the right head shell. One more thing about this uh, cartridge. Now, it doesn't really matter because it's already mounted, but this cartridge actually has threaded attachments. So normally, if anybody's ever changed out a cartridge before, it can be a lot of fun because you, you have nuts that are about the size of, I don't know, a pencil eraser, except much, much thinner. And so it's difficult to get that right in place, hold it with some type of tweezers or something, and then screw things down. With the Audio-Technica, what is it, VM95E, there we go. It has threaded inserts, so you just need the bolt. You just screw the bolt in so you don't have to worry about holding those little nuts. I know that doesn't mean anything because it's already installed. But if you're looking to buy another cartridge, that's a pretty solid feature to have because it's going to save a lot of headaches and a lot of have you ever dropped one of those nuts put it in the comments if you've ever changed out a cartridge and dropped one of the nuts let me know because i have i really like how this looks i like the wood color i like the fake wood I like it on speakers and stuff too even when you get it close up it's pretty good anyway the integrated phono stage about what you would expect on a 250 and fifty turntable with an integrated photo stage it's okay it works now, to be fair, this thing sounds almost as good as a $500 turntable I just had in from a more recognized turntable manufacturer that has an integrated phono amp. If you're looking for the utmost or if you're looking to get the most out of this table, I would eventually look at 
an outboard or separate phono preamp. If you have an integrated amp that already has a phono stage in it or a receiver that has a phono stage in it, I would directly compare an AB, the integrated phono preamp in this, to your phono amp and your integrated or your receiver. If you don't like either one of them, then maybe consider an outboard phono preamp like the IFI Zen Phono, the Shit Manny, I think it is. U-Turn has one called the Pluto 2, and then you can get a whole bunch of them on Amazon from people like Fozzy Audio. I did notice a pretty significant difference when I hooked up even the very affordable Fozzy Audio, it's a little tube phono preamp. A lot cleaner, a lot cleaner. This is gonna get you by though. Couple of the other features in this thing. It has Bluetooth. What does that mean? It means if you have some powered speakers or really anything with a Bluetooth receiver, you can Bluetooth this over to it. I don't know why you'd do that, but you can do it. Or if you have some Bluetooth headphones, you can turn on a, a record and then sit back with your headphones and listen to it. I guess it's pretty cool. I personally would probably never use the Bluetooth, but uh, it's there if you want it. One of the other cool features about this thing is the USB output, which means you can record your records onto a digital format through a computer. And it does it through Audacity, Audacity, which is a free download. And it walks you through it in the uh, directions in the manual if you want to do that. So if you have a bunch of records and you want to digitize them, put, put them on your network attached storage device or something like that, you can do that with this table. So I think that's pretty cool. I would probably use that way more than I would use any type of Bluetooth connectivity. Final thoughts on this turntable is I think this is for beginners. Vinyl purists are gonna turn their nose up at this thing, but if you are looking for a second turntable and you need some of the features in this thing, I think it's pretty good. I think it's on par with U-Turn it has some extra features like the removable head shell, like the Bluetooth, like the internal phono preamp, like the USB output. So if that moves the needle for you, then I think this is something to consider. I think the cartridge on here is pretty solid. I think the build, the aesthetics is really cool. Overall, I think this is a good turntable. I think it falls short of the Fluence as far as build quality. In my experience, the most significant sound differences that you can make with a turntable as far as upgrading it are generally with the cartridge and with an external phono preamp. You can do that. And at $250, you would be able to switch out or buy another cartridge for what you would pay to get another turntable in this price category. And most of the other turntables are not gonna have Bluetooth USB integrated phono preamp. If, if I was buying a brand new turntable, I would probably be looking at this one pretty hard and the Fluence, simply because of the removable head shell. And I would probably buy this over a U-turn because of the removable head shell. I think it's a solid option at $250. I think this is a good first outing for Monolith with their turntables. I would like to see something that maybe doesn't have all the fanciness doesn't have a USB, doesn't have Bluetooth, doesn't have an integrated phono stage, maybe beef up the build quality, maybe put some adjustable feet on it, and then keep it around that same $250 to $300 price point, and I think they've got a real winner. There's no automatic features on this table either, so once it gets to the end of the record, it's gonna keep on playing. But to be fair, almost no turntables in this price range have any type of automatic features, Except for the Fluence, uh, they have auto stop. I have no problems recommending this table. Bear in mind, it could be a little bit frustrating if you've never set up a table before, especially with the anti-skate feature. The platter rings a little bit, which I know is kind of a no-no, and that's why people like acrylic and glass platters, because once you hit it, it's just there's nothing in there. So when I hit this platter, it does ring a little bit. If you're worried about that aspect of it, this is not the table for you. This is a beginner table. It's gonna have you enjoying vinyl right out of the gate as soon as you get as soon as you get it set up, okay? Okay. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio man. Every Sunday night we have patron only Zooms. We also have a patron only Facebook group. 
You can also sign up for Amazon Music or Tidal. There are links in the description. Sign up even if it's only for a trial. I do get a couple of dollars. You can also buy this through my affiliate link. If you click and buy, I will get a commission, but it doesn't cost you any more, so it's a great way to support the channel. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen to some vinyl through your new monolith turntable and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.